to the living room. We call it that because, well, we're in a room and yeah, it's a living. Well, actually, this week, almost a death, Chris and Miguel, absolutely terrifying. You were abseiling down a damn wall. Yeah, but I can tell you, that was a got a rush. That was amazing. A rash? Yeah, a rash. Mm. Oh, like, actually, <laughs> a rash. Actually, yeah, there, there was a rash as well. <laughs> we'll get to that later on. Well, that story's about to come up later. Uh, look, first up, I want to ask you guys a simple question. If you could be one thing, anything in the world, what would it be? Singer. I think definitely singer. I can see you singing. With that hair. Oh, I know. Could be He's got it all happening. How about you, Chris? I think, uh, look, probably an actor. Mm. Miguel? If I get to choose what to be live, I'd like to be a woman. <laughs> a, a really pretty woman. Have you understood the question? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, our guest tonight is someone you can all envy because she's a singer, she's an actor, and she's a very attractive woman. Please welcome the star of Legally Blonde, Lucy Durack. that at the top of your list of everything you've ever wanted to do is to come on the living room. I know. Look at this. This oh. is perfect. Ticking and off that bucket list. Tick that one. And <laughs> Taxi's bucket list was to meet Chris Brown. I know. So we are happy campers, aren't we? <laughs> oh, wow. Very exciting. I actually want to know something about Taxi. Yeah. Does Taxi ever get jealous considering the fact you spend your entire working life hanging out with another dog, a chihuahua, well, in Legally Blonde? Look, Taxi's very balanced. It's actually the chihuahuas. It's the other way around. I think they didn't realise that I had another dog in my life. So the first day that they him. met him, they were like, <gasps> a roar! Didn't they? they didn't, well, they weren't very friendly to him. And they've met him a couple of times since and they haven't been very excited at the time. Two hours, they're the jealous type. I know, aren't they just? <laughs> well, Lucy, it's fabulous that you're here and that taxi's here. It's hard to get a taxi in this town. <laughs> <laughs> I think I heard a groan. <laughs> but I think taxi might be interested in our next segment and that segment is Hot or Not. If you think YouTube is a type of plumbing supply, then move your chair closer to the TV because Hot or Not is for you. Each week we search the deepest recesses of that world internet web thing for products that someone thinks we can't live without and we decide if they should get hotted or get knotted. Uh, Chris, mm. we'll start with you. I'm so glad you did because, look, out there at the moment, as a vet, I know that pets, they're misunderstood. You want to know why? Why? Because we talk to them a lot and when they talk back to us, we don't understand what they're saying. It's a really big problem. Oh, I know the UN has been debating this for years. Oh, it's, it is true. It is true. But thankfully there is now the bow lingual. <laughs> so what it is, it's a canine bark translator. It can translate the barks of 80 different breeds of dogs because they are very different. <laughs> and tell you exactly what they're saying. I mean, whether they're happy, they're sad, or just a bit confused about the fact you've lost your mind by having one of these. <laughs> it sounds so scientific, Chris. It, and it is, Amanda. It really, really is. <laughs> but do you mind, Lucy, if we well, test it on... I would love that. Tax? On little taxi here. Chris, do you so... have a way of getting dogs to bark? Uh, I do, but, but that would require a glove. <laughs> so all we need to do is just get taxi to bark. <laughs> Do you have any? Make a cat noise, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Should we try it on another dumb animal? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I say it with love, Miguel. It's different in English. I go deep within your heart to express your innermost canine emotions with the, the bark that just says it all. <laughs> <laughs> Received that, it's analysing. <laughs> Analysis complete. Ooh, just a bit of a warning to everyone. Careful who you mess with. <laughs> That's pretty good, actually. It wasn't bad. <laughs> well, what do we think? Do we think it's hot or do we think it's not? <laughs> it's so scientific. Come on. Well, Miguel, now that we know what you really think, how about you? What have you got? Well, I, we always have these chats when we go for a run in the morning, you and I, Amanda. And you always tell me, you always tell me how much you struggle in the barbecue to get your marinade in every single corner of the skewer. I talk of little else. Okay, I want the solution for this problem. It's called the fire wire. Let me show you. Okay. okay. You see, touchy-feely is the best way to see food, okay? So, with the fire wire, 
you can get all your pieces of food or maybe meat, get them through the skewer, it's a cable, not a skewer, first thing, you can get all the marina in every single corner that normally you could not do. Second thing, you get so much more meat. Look at this! Miguel, is that a special piece of wire? Is that just a piece of wire you could find on the side of the street? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> So there's no. nothing special in the wire? Well, if you put it that way, it's nothing special. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> but if you dress it up with a little bit of capsicum and yeah. mushrooms... I think the Bowlingles just started working and it's reading Taxi's mind. He's like, oh, my God, I didn't think this day could get any better. Taxi! <laughs> Taxi! Taxi! Taxi. <laughs> oh, is it? Taxi thinks it's hot. What do the rest of you, hot or not? Oh, really? Really? OK, well, well done. All right, Barry, over to you. Last, but please don't be least, because that was truly dreadful. Doing my best. <laughs> OK, what I've got, Amanda, is called the Toki clock. Looks like an alarm clock, feels like an alarm clock, but the difference is, and this is why you need a difference, there has been a survey done and 40% of people do abuse their snooze button and eventually throw the clock across the room and miss their appointments. So that's why this has been developed. The Toki clock, when it goes off, it rolls away from you, so you can't abuse it, you can't hit the snooze button. You have to get out of bed to turn it off. Why don't you just put your regular alarm clock on the other side of the room? You got all the answers, haven't you? <laughs> I love being smug. You are. Well, uh, is that pretty much it? Is that its tricks? Is that its stuff? Well, that's what it does. Oh, it's amazing, yeah. Barry. It's Thank a, you, it is it's, amazing. It's life-changing. Do we think that that's hot or not? No. Can you believe the only hot today was that meat thing? <laughs> well, look, that's it. I don't know if hot or not solved any of the world's most pressing problems, but it did keep us off the street for a few minutes, and that's hot in itself. If you've seen a product that you think could be hotted or knotted, please go to our website and tell us about it. There's no reward for doing it, but it will give you a nice, warm feeling. Uh, Lucy, can you join us a bit later in the show? I'd love to. Just like your agent promised you would? OK, <laughs> thank you. Uh, and you can always join the Living Room Conversation by downloading the Z-Box app and you can chat about what you thought was the hottest item tonight. Amanda is spelt with one M. <laughs> <laughs> and when we come back, and we will, bad luck, our very own cash converter, Jason Cunningham, takes up the challenge to find $1,000 in any home. And just on your electricity bill alone, total saving $750 a year. And Thelma and Louise here continue their lap of Tassie. <laughs> I hope it's a pleasant one. Now, tonight we've been joined by the far too talented star of stage and screen, Ms Lucy Durek, who's currently stunning audiences in Legally Blonde, the musical. Um, now, most of us know the story to Legally Blonde, but say you're in the back row of the movies and you're kissing and you missed the plot, give us a, <laughs> give us a pricey of Legally Blonde. Sure, personal story. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so basically Elle Woods, who I, is the character that I play and very famously is played by Reese Witherspoon in the film, she's in love with Warner Huntington III, played by Rob Mills in our version, and, um, and he says at the Reese, he breaks up with her at the start, she thinks he's proposing and she's so excited and, and he breaks up and says she's not serious enough and he's going to Harvard, so she thinks the way to win him back is to, to go to Harvard herself, but in the process of it finds somebody who she's much more suited to and finds out that actually she is quite a good lawyer, but she's got a good heart and she's unprejudiced and it's got a good story um, and a good sort of message. Oh, good. I mean, we, we've heard a lot there about the human cast. Enough about them. Mm. Um, the, the animal cast, <laughs> the dogs involved. Obviously, there's a chihuahua that is front and centre. There's two chihuahuas that alternate the role of Bruiser, who's my, my dog in the show, and they've kind of been trained up to be, to be Bruiser and they're very well trained. And did you have to find a chemistry with Bruiser? We did. The, that was the nicest part of the rehearsal period is at the start of each day, myself and and Renee, who plays Margot, who also has... We're the only two who really handle the dogs in the... Those two dogs in the show. Uh, we got to spend, like, half an hour to an hour playing with them, basically, and learning... Because it's all about training us, of course, what to do with the dogs. Are they always on their game. I mean, I, I, I have a running sort of battle with a lump, number of chihuahuas at the vet clinic because I've lost more blood to chihuahuas than any other dog. <laughs> really? <laughs> just underfoot? Well, just they, they bite and they, they, they've got small dog syndrome. I mean, they, they're aware of their size. Yeah. <laughs> but, 
for, for you, they're lovely dogs, but they, they do, they don't want to take a backward step. With no. your, the ones you work with, are they always on the, the go? They, they are very well behaved, but yeah, at the end of the day, they are dogs, so, yeah. and they always say, you never work with children or animals, but, but I don't think that's true. It keeps it really fresh and it exciting. Does. For us. <laughs> yeah, that's what you want from a dog, is something fresh every day on the stage. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, you've got a solo album out at the moment. Tell I us do. about that. I uh, Thanks, yeah, I've been really lucky to put out an album of mostly jazz classics and standards with a couple of new songs, two that I've written on there, and it's been so much fun with beautiful, lush instrumentation that I can't take any credit for, but that's um, been lovely to, to have that experience. There's a very famous scene in the film and in the musical, and I would love it if you could recreate it with these guys here. Sure. This is where you have oh. to teach the others to do the bend and snap. It's true. Can you show us the bend and snap? Bend I've snap. been dying to bend and snap for oh, years now. I bet you had about you. Yes. <laughs> Come on, guys, up you get. I'll just sit back and All judge. Right. Taxi. Okay. Got the best view from here. Okay. Well, um, just remember I'm legally grey. <laughs> I'll get a whole taxi. So the, oh, thanks. <laughs> so the whole premise of it is that Elle Woods is teaching Paulette the beautician how to, you know, attract guys. So this is perfect <laughs> for you guys. This is going to be great. <laughs> so what you start by running your hands down your feminine curves. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you bend and then quite quickly we snap. All right. Are you like this? And you swap your legs. What's, what's with this? Because so it's not so masculine, kind of, this bit. Look, this is not the most masculine move, but I reckon, I reckon you're up for the challenge. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, bend. Bend. Ready, mm. and snap. Snap. Oh. <laughs> Very nicely done. <laughs> what a beautiful male bonding moment. Oh. Right, Barry, there yeah. you go. You'll yeah. be right. Thank you. We'll give you a nice bath afterwards, hey? <laughs> <laughs> now, uh... <laughs> Delightful. Here's a biscuit. Uh, Legally Blonde the Musical is moving to Brisbane, where I believe uh, being blonde is not just legal but compulsory. Absolutely. I think that the Gold Coast is actually where Legally Blonde in Australia will probably be <laughs> set. <laughs> so, Queensland viewers, book your tickets right away. And thank you so much for joining us. Thank it's you for having me. But from Legally Blonde to Certifiably Insane, it's a 100...